Welcome, my fellow masters. After a bit of a break from events to allow the Olympus Lost Belt story to be released, we are back at it with the Guda Guda 4 rerun. Final Honoji All Out Nobunaga Assault. This event will run from April 19th through to May 2nd, a duration just shy of a full two weeks. No super high requirements to participate in the event. You just need to have cleared Fuyuki. Now, since this is an event rerun, I'm sure there are many who already know what to expect. But for those that may not have played through the event last year or are relatively new to the game, I'll be going over how this event works. So you will start out with the event's main questline, and at the beginning, you will be joined by the four-star Lancer, Nagao Kagetora, this event's free SR servant. Kagetora is a single target Lancer with an Arts MP. She would be a great addition to anyone's Chaldea, having a fairly well-rounded kit. Kagetora can increase her Arts performance up to 30% and increase her Star Absorption by 500% for one turn each. For a hard defense option, she has a one turn evade that also increases her own MP generation for one turn. And she can provide some party utility with a three turn party, party wide increase to attack, critical damage, and star generation. Her single target MP will hit the enemy eight times and has a useful effect of removing any offensive buffs the, from the target enemy, plus reducing their crit chance from 20 to 60% depending on overcharge. Since Kagetora is a, an event welfare servant, you will be able to get extra copies of her to raise her MP level to 5, thus providing you with quite a powerful ST Lancer. Definitely someone worth completing the event to obtain. As mentioned, Kagetora will join you on a temporary basis at the beginning of the main quest, and in order to make her permanent, you must clear the event's main story up to the epilogue. The epilogue will unlock on April 25th, 2100 PDT. Her ascension items will be rewards from certain suppression quests, and extra copies of Kagetora for raising her MP level can be obtained from clearing the post epilogue part 2 main quests. And for those that have already have her at MP5 from last year, each copy from the 6th onwards will provide a rare prism sent to your present box. Kagetora also will, will receive double EXP from enhancements during the event period so best to take advantage of this to level her up. And as a bonus for her, she also has a simple Spiritron dress costume that can be obtained in this event. And if this is your second time around for this event, a rare prism will be given instead. As you go through the event's main story, there will be a total of 4 SQ provided as quest clear rewards. Now in order to progress through this event, a number of special resources will be needed to unlock certain sections of the story, along with various other quests. There are three of these resource supplies that will be produced as you complete event quests. You have Military Rations, Black Powder, Tatara Iron. Note, QP will also be produced as quests are cleared, so this event provides an opportunity to stock back up on QP if you are running low. You will want to increase your production capacity of these supplies by expanding the territory you control in this pseudo-feudal Japan warring state story. In turn, to do this you will need to clear territory control quests, also referred to as suppression quests, but these suppression quests will require spending some of these very supplies to gain access to them, instead of the usual AP. So it becomes a bit of a cycle. Clear a quest to produce supplies, spend some of those supplies to gain territory, thus increasing production capacity, and then repeat. If you find yourself lacking the supplies to make progress, then do the event free quests in order to produce more supplies. Note, supplies will not be expended if you fail to clear the suppression quests. And then, as one would expect for an event, completing the main story will grant one holy grail at the end. Or, if this is your second time playing through this event, it will be a crystallized lore instead. There are also recruitment quests to have specific NPC servants join you. When they do, they will be available as support options in battle, mainly geared towards aiding in the suppression quests. When you enter the support selection screen, you will note that a particular NPC support will indicate they are the best fit for the battle. Some suppression quests have difficult gimmicks, 
and these NPC supports that are the best fit have their own effect that can counter the gimmick to make clearing the quest easier. That is assuming you have the right NPC support unlocked. So that's where clearing these recruitment quests come in. Here is a list of the available NPCs and their effects during the battle when they are indicated as best fit, along with the quests to complete in order to unlock them. If I recall correctly, getting most of these NPCs unlocked is optional, and it is possible to clear suppression quests without them. However, some suppression quests have really troublesome gimmicks, in which case, some of these NPC supports are highly recommended. The following suppression quests are the ones I felt were the most troublesome without using the recommended NPC support. Karasuyama, where all the enemies get a permanent chance to evade, and the support, Emiya, provides a permanent sure hit effect. Mumaya Goldmine, in this, all the enemies get an absolute resistance to all types of damage for 7 turns and an attack buff. To counter this, the recommended support coup will provide the party with evade for 5 hits and a 5 times guts effect. Sado Goldmine. All enemies receive a 2 million HP heal at the end of every turn, but the recommended NPC support Medea will charge all allies MP gauge and buff their MP damage every turn for 10 turns. Sugu Goldmine Where all enemies get a permanent critical chance increase and super critical damage increase. If you bring the recommended NPC support Sitanai, her permanent effect will drastically reduce the damage you receive when a critical hit occurs. Obama The enemy here will have a 100% resistance to normal attacks. So the only way to deal damage is with NPs. The NPC support Medea will charge all allies MP gauge every turn for 10 turns and increase their MP damage. Nico. The enemy will have a critical rate up and critical damage increase. So the NPC support Sitanai can permanently reduce the enemy's critical damage to a large degree. Chichibu Mine. The enemy here will have a large HP pool of 2.6 million with a damage resistance and instant death resistance increase. The NPC support Cursed Arm will inflict a debuff to instant death resistance with every normal attack and each hit will also have a chance to instantly kill the target. Coco Ninja Village All enemies will get a permanent chance based evasion buff. Use the NPC support Emya for his permanent party-wide sure hit effect. Ryugyu Jo. The enemy will heal itself for around 50k with each normal attack. Using the support Medusa's stun skill on the enemy will also debuff their defense for a turn. Plus, support Medusa will have a bonus to her debuff success rate and her skill's cooldown will be reduced by 2 every turn. If you're relatively new to the game or have a limited servant roster, then I would recommend to use the NPC support indicated as the best fit for every suppression quests. So try to complete each recruitment quest as they come up to ensure you have the proper NPC support available. For this event, a number of servants will have a bonus to damage and their bond. As one would expect, the damage bonus for the event Welfare Servant Kagatora will be 100%. The Avenger class Demon King Nobunaga will also benefit from a 100% damage bonus. The past Guda Guda related servants, like the other versions of Nobunaga, Okita, Ryoma, and Cha Cha will get a 50% damage bonus, along with other servants that feature prominently in this event. There are also servants with a 30% damage bonus who all have a minor role in the story. And your trusty Kohai Mash will be granted a 50% damage bonus along with a party-wide 5% bonus to bond. If you're concerned about not having most of or any of these servants pictured here, then not to worry. The event 5-star Craft Essence, an army marches on its stomach, will provide a 100% damage bonus to the servant that has it equipped. The bonus becomes 200% if max limit broken. This CE also has some pretty decent regular effects like a 10% increase to arts and quick performance, plus a 10% buff to critical damage. You can purchase 4 copies of the CE from the event shop, 
Unfortunately, it is up to the RNG gods to grant the needed fifth copy to max limit break it. Any of the event free quests have the potential to drop the CE as an item reward. Now, let's take a look at the event shop currency and what can be purchased with them. There is Formation Miso, Unbiased Salt, and Rami Threads. You can obtain these from farming the various event free quests. Looking at the items available for purchase with the Formation Misu, most notable are the Ascension items. 10 Gallstones, 20 Tear Stones, and 20 Black Beast Grease. 3,700 Formation Miso will be needed to purchase everything here. For the Unbiased Salt items, of note, there are 20 Reactor Cores, 20 Ghost Lanterns, and 20 Eternal Gears. To buy everything shown, a total of 4100 salt will be needed. Lastly, the items pictured here require the Rami Thread currency. Again, just highlighting the Ascension materials, there are 20 Giant's Rings, 30 Void Dust, and 30 Evil Bones. A total of 3900 thread will be required to purchase everything. As usual, there are limited craft essences that can be obtained from the event's Pick Up Summon banner, and these CEs will each provide a drop bonus to a corresponding currency we just discussed. We have the limited 5-star CE Warlord's Rivalry, with some really stunning art in my opinion. It will provide a plus 1 drop to Formation Miso, and its regular effects are quite nice as well, providing a starting charge of 40%, along with an increase to both Buster and Quick performance by 10%, plus all attack scaling. I think this CE can be effective for use outside the event, and I'm hoping to get this max limit broken myself. Then we have the limited 4-star CE God of War, with Art of Kagatora looking pretty cute. This CE will provide a plus 1 drop to Unbiased Salt, and for a 4-star CE, its effects are not too shabby with an increase of 8% to Art's performance, MP damage, and NP gain, along with having all attack scaling. And for the 3-star event CE, there is Oni Tea Ceremony, depicting Hijikata enjoying a cup of tea and some dango, chilling with Mori and Old Lee. Having the CE equipped will provide a plus 1 drop to Rami Thread. There is also a chance for the CE to be summoned from the friend point gacha, although the odds are fairly low. Completing Section 1 of the event main quest will also provide one copy as a reward for clearing the quest. This event will feature a summoning banner that has four limited servants and one story locked. Starting with the 5-star adventure Demon King Nobunaga. A limited SSR servant with an AoE Buster MP, Avenger Nobu has an anti-divine niche and with the release of this event, a buff to her second skill that provides an additional damage to Sky Attribute enemies, an attribute fairly common among those with the Divine trait. Her MP also has a very useful effect of removing Divine enemies' defensive buffs which is applied first. I think when Avenger Nobu first came out, there was a fair bit of criticism towards her damage output, especially when compared to her AoE Avenger counterparts, Edmund Dantes and Space Ishtar. But I think with her buff, she should see an improvement, at least when factoring her niche against Sky Attribute and Divine Trait enemies. That said, with Space Ishtar due to come back next January, I would wait until then for an AoE Avenger and only roll for Avenger Nobu if she's waifu. Another limited 5 star on rate up is the Alter Ego class Okita Soji Alter who has an AoE Buster MP. Like Avenger Nobu, Okita Alter is also getting a buff to her second skill released with this event. It provides an additional increase to her attack, but is only effective for 3 hits. Now, this should still improve her overall damage output, especially with her MP if timed well. Unfortunately, she has to compete with the AoE Arts wielding Alter Ego Kiara and the AoE Quick wielding and Party Support Heavy Ashia Doman both of whom will be on rate up later this year. So if you're looking for an AoE Alter Ego, you may want to wait for either Kiara or Ashia Domon, but I certainly wouldn't blame you for rolling for Okita Alter if she's waifu. That brings us to the rate up 4-star of the banner, 
the limited single target buster Berserker Oda Nobunaga. This summer version of Nobu will also be getting a buff released with this event, strengthening her MP, plus giving it an effect to grant herself the Burning Battlefield buff for three turns. This will work nicely with her third skill which increases her attack on Burning Battlefields, which saw limited effect before. Her MP's overcharge effect also provides bonus damage to divine trait enemies, a trait that is widely applicable. I find Summer Nobu quite fun to use, and she can hold her own as a boss killer if her anti-divine niche is leveraged properly. Among single target SR Berserkers, Summer Nobu is actually one of the more powerful ones. So if you're looking to fill that particular role, then this rock and roll loving Nobu is a pretty good choice in my opinion. Next up is the 3 star Berserker Mori Nagayoshi, and quite unique for his rarity is that Mori is limited. He has a single target Buster MP that can both ignore invincibility and defense, along with an overcharge effect of debuffing the target's defense. His skill set is fairly quirky, due to a couple demerits that reduce his already paper thin defense and prevents any of his own buffs from succeeding. However, that last point can be circumvented by following a certain activation sequence of his skills, but there is no doubt that Mori can be tricky to use, more so than usual for a Berserker. I think his best upside is his ability to increase his critical damage up to 100% for 3 turns, which is one of the best buffs of this type among servants. He even has a star absorb skill to go with it, except it only lasts for one turn. All in all, with the proper setup Mori can dish out tons of damage, and I suspect many will roll on this banner to get at least a copy of him since he is limited. But if you're not overly attached to Mori as a character, then there is a much easier to use and free 3 star signal target berserker alternative in Lubu Fenzian. Lastly, there is the story locked 5 star assassin Li Xuan. He has a single target arts MP that has a chance to insta kill the target, plus an overcharge effect that activates first and reduces the target's defense by 20 to 40% depending on OC. These skills can increase his attack, grant him stars absorb those stars, plus boost his critical damage up to 100% for one turn, thereby giving him incredible burst damage potential. He is definitely one of the hardest hitting ST assassins and will get stronger with a future buff to his MP expected in December. However, he is story locked and will always have a rate up during the annual Caldea Boys event that occurs in March. And with Kama's banner not too far off, I would recommend waiting for her if you need a single target assassin. Here is a look at the various goodies you can obtain from clearing the main story quests, suppression quests, and recruitment quests. Highlighting the ascension material, there are 10 foreign god hearts, 10 chaos claws, 10 lamps of evil ceiling, 10 divine wine, 5 gallstones, 10 of each for magatamas, knight medals, Serpent Jewels, Octuplet Crystals, Fool's Chains, Hero's Proofs, and Mystic Gunpowder. There will also be three command codes obtainable as quest rewards. The 5 star command code Great Fool of Awari that provides a 30% increase to critical damage against divine enemies to the engraved card. If you have already obtained this command code from the original run of the event, then instead you will receive a rare prism. The 4 star command code Fine Sword, which applies the Ignore Invincible effect to the engraved card. For those that received this last year, you will get 200 mana prisms instead. And thirdly, a 3 star command code The Inexperienced Fantasies Command Seal. This will provide an increase to critical star gather rate by 100% for the engraved card, but only if it's an arts card and 100 mana prisms will be awarded instead if you have already obtained this command code. For the best spots to farm for shop currency, Thread can be farmed in the free quest Gifu Castle, which has three waves of assassin enemies. Potential ascension drops in this free quest include Skumo Mirrors, Octuplet Crystals, and Serpent Jewels. Salt currency can be best obtained in the free quest Sunpu Castle, which is an all berserker node. Ascension materials that may drop as well include spirit roots and stakes. And finally, 
The free quest, Demon King's Castle, is the best place for miso currency. This is an all archer node with possible drops of ascension material that include gallstones, eternal gears, and void dust. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover for this Guda Guda 4 rerun. I hope at least some of the information was helpful to one degree or another. I'll be doing a separate overview of the challenge quest for this event, closer to when the epilogue will be released. So please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And please let me know in the comments if this is your first playthrough of Guda Guda 4, or if you've been here and done that. Many thanks for watching, and until the next one.